What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you my architecture school project in Revit. And uh, last week I did a video where I showed you basically how I got to that project and I, I was talking about all of the architectural aspects of that project and how I got to the design, the concept, everything else. And in today's video I'm going to be looking at it from more of a Revit constructors uh, viewpoint. So I'm just going to be showing you how I modeled that in Revit and what the, what were some tools and, uh, and basically modeling techniques or best practices that I used uh, to get to that uh, final building for my for my test. Okay. So, but before I get started, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make Revit tutorials every day. And if you want to download this, uh, this Revit project file that I have over here, or actually two project files, the first iteration and the second iteration, uh, you can check out my Patreon first link in the description and you can get access to those files. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, here, as you can see on my desktop, I've got this image. This is kind of something I started from. So I basically started from uh, just creating an in-place family where I had uh, just a bunch of these different colored elements where uh, basically the color depends on uh, what uh, what's the use of that part of the building. Now, I wasn't happy with this design, so I kind of scrapped it. And uh, then I went into Revit and I modeled something that looks like this. So this is that design. And if you want to learn more about why the building looks like this, again, check that video out. I'm going to be leaving a, a link in the description. But anyway, so this is what we have. And as you can see over here, if I go over these elements, this is a generic model. So this is actually an in-place family. It's not a mass, it's a family. I prefer using families for uh, things like this, things of this sort. Uh, just the modeling techniques are a bit simpler for families than for masses. So this is what I used for this iteration of the project. And then for these cubes, again, uh, I just used an in-place family. Family. So you go here in place. As you can see, these are all just simple extrusion elements, and that's what I did to get to this shape. So maybe I can change it a bit. But there you go, you get the point. And if I go finish model, yeah. And all of these columns are basic concrete columns, and we've got a floor over here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a very basic model basically three elements just this, this columns, and this floor, and that's it. And this part was modeled, uh, maybe open this up just to see how I modeled this. So as you can see, this is one big element. So if I go to edit extrusion, it looks like that. And then I cut it with this uh, void to get that separation between uh, this uh, facade and uh, the building. And then here I created another void to get that entrance over here. So that's how we got to that. Okay, let me cancel out of that. Okay, so that was the first iteration and then I was happy with that, but I wasn't happy with the way I was modeling these cubes. As you can see, I have a bunch of these different sized cubes and I, I needed to find an efficient way to model them for the, the next uh, version. So if we go over here to this, uh, this model, this is the final one, this is the final version, maybe add some shadows. So the facade is quite different. As you can see, it's kind of filleted over here. And here these cubes, they if you zoom in, they're actually full elements and they're actually uh, families. So if I select one of these, as you can see, it's a family and they're, all of them are different uh, dimensions, different sizes. So I need to find a way to create a parametric a cube element that looks like a building element that I can kind of add to this project and then I can change its size. So if I go here to edit family, if I select one of these, this is what I got. So this is what we have. And if I go here into reference level, as you can see, we've got these parameters. I've got a length parameter as well as a width parameter. They're both equalized. So I can actually go in here and change the dimensions and the whole thing will change accordingly. So if we go into 3D, as you can see, that's how it works. And the same thing goes for height. Height is also a parameter, so I can even change the height if I select, is this the reference plane? No, this is a generic line. Can I select that reference plane? 
is this the generic line? No. Okay, but you get the point. Uh, maybe I can go over here and change the uh, the height to, I don't know, 10 meters. Hit apply, and as you can see now it changed. This is now at 10 meters. So you get the point. Everything is parametric, and we've got that lovely 3D shape. So let me just cancel out of that, out of that, out of that. Let's not change anything. So you get the point. So we've got a bunch of these cubes, and then I went in and once I finalized their position in space as well as their dimensions, I added somewhere these curtain walls and stuff like that. So curtain wall here and here, as you can see, we've got a curtain wall that's just placed over there and then you can edit the profile and just adjust it. But I, for this iteration, I just needed it to look nice and that was it. And then I added these structural cores. So as you can see here, we've got a structural core going through this thing and I wasn't really bothered that much with uh, with the fact that this is kind of poking through this cube and it doesn't really look right. So I, I just made it look nice because that was the point for this first uh, first iteration. And if you look at the floors, floors are basically just generic floors. And again, I only added floors where you can see it in 3D so it would look, I, I don't know, a bit more thought through and realistic. Also here I added some floors. So for the first iteration it's more mostly presentation. I'm not really working with something that needs to, well, work in the space. Anyway, let's move on. And for this big mass element, if I go here, make sure that show mass is on. As you can see, this is an in-place mass uh, that I used uh, just to kind of host uh, these curved walls and uh, this curtain wall over here that's kind of at a weird angle. So I need to have that. And again, as you can see here through the model, I've got some railing, some floors inside just for my sections. Maybe we can go down here, find uh, the perspective sections that I've got. Let's see, will it open this up? Where's the section? Okay, it's this one. Yeah, as you can see, so I wanted to have this perspective section that's got all of these floors inside. So I've got all those elements. And of course, whenever you have these uh, complex structures uh, like this, where you have a bunch of small elements, I always uh, recommend using perspective sections because they add depth to space and it just looks better. If I did this as a regular section, probably you wouldn't be able to realize uh, how this whole whole thing looks and that there is a bunch of free space inside of this thing. And uh, let's go to the second one. Yeah, as you can see here, we can see this staircase, we can see elements like that. So it gives us some depth and understanding of how this whole thing looks like. And here, let's go back into 3D. Uh, then for the for the facade, as you can see, I left the facade as just a, a mass element or no, this was actually an in-place family. Yeah, this is an in-place family and it's just glass. So it's see-through and let's cancel out of that. So what I did then, I created another TV screen family that uh, was phase-based. So that's this thing. So as you can see, these are all separate elements and it's just one parametric family that you can rotate around and adjust its dimensions. So even though these are different sizes, it's the same family and here I've got these uh, these instance instance parameters so I can change the width uh, the panel offset so when we go over here we can actually change the distance from the panel uh, from uh, this uh, this structural facade so if I go like this I can change this panel offset to maybe 40 and then as you can see it offsets or maybe 10 then it goes back in so you get the point so we've got that offset as well as the height parameter you can let's do 800 and as you can see now it's wider and of course you can rotate it in space and then I just did a bunch of those and if we go here to edit family this is what that looks like so it's just a, a family that's if we look from the front this is that panel offset that I created and then this here is a family and again we've got panel width as well as panel height and we can actually change this thing and it as you can see the the dimensions change with it. So let's cancel out of that. Nope. Yeah, so we just made a bunch of those and I hosted them on this thing and then I added uh, all of the site elements. So the the trees, 
just to make it look nicer and here we've got entrance for the garage this is just a simple uh, simple floor and here as you can see uh, underneath we have a garage but again it's not really that thought through I've just got a bunch of these columns and uh, the columns are mostly so when you look here in the section you can see that there's a garage underneath again we're trying to make it look nice for this first iteration of the project nobody cares really about how it works and uh, just to give you a sneak peek of what's next, because I've already started working on the next iteration of the project, I decided to take this little segment because, you can, as you can see, it works uh, al alone on on its own. So I just took this segment and I selected all of the elements and then I grouped them, and then uh, I just you can create a link out of that group and then you can start continue working on the project. But instead of creating a link, I just copied the the group into a separate project and start started working there uh, just because I didn't want to reuse uh, this family I wanted to remodel it using beams and columns as you can see over here and uh, if you can't see it let me pull that family up for a second and as you can see over here we've got that same thing but uh, these are instead of using those families these are now beams and columns so it just looks a bit better and it works a lot nicer and then I can uh, make changes to these connections so these connection points look better and again as you can see now I'm working uh, a lot more on these inside elements and all of the inside structural stuff stuff like that so I'm just continuing working on the project and don't worry I'm going to make be making a setter a second iteration uh, video a bit later on when I'm finished with the whole thing making it nice and detailed like this so anyway, that's how I created this model. I think I have an image over here. Yeah, I also created this exploded diagram. Uh, I always like those. They explain how the building kind of goes together. So because I had these families and these were all separate elements, I could create something that looks like this. But anyway, so that's for my uh, student project and how I assembled it in Revit. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed learning some of my approaches to working in Revit when it comes to school projects. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. If you want to download both of these project files, check out my Patreon first link in the description. Okay, so that's pretty much it, and I'll see you with another Revit tutorial tomorrow.